On December 21st, 2018, the merchant vessel Grande Tema was inbound to the Thames estuary in the UK as she was looking to pull into port. Unknown to the crew, a group of armed hijackers suddenly emerged and threatened violence against the crew if their demands were not met. Stranded for almost 12 hours after locking themselves inside the bridge for safety, the terrified crew waited for help. Just before midnight that night, one of Britain's most secret special operations groups would fast rope onto the ship and take it back. But how did armed hijackers get onto the ship in the first place? The vessel that the hijackers tried to take over that day was the Italian-owned Conroe ship Grande Tema. The Grande Tema weighs in at a massive 71,000 tons and is about 770 feet long. The massive merchant ship's primary cargo was vehicles, vans, trucks, and heavy machinery that were held in her giant cargo bay. Topside, she was equipped with cranes and carrying capacity for containerized cargo as well. In December 2018, the Grande Tema was on the last leg of an African voyage. After leaving Casablanca on November 20th, she began a several-week journey along the African coast that saw port calls in the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Benin, and finally Lagos, Nigeria. Once she had picked up her final cargo load, she set sail on December 7th for Tilbury in the United Kingdom. All seemed well during her journey until 10 days later, as they were nearing the Canary Islands. It's unknown who discovered them exactly, but it's probable that one of the crew members while making his rounds on watch was checking all the spaces when he went down to the lower cargo hold. Down there, he noticed four African men hanging out who were not part of the crew. What was even more concerning was that two of the men were hanging on the railing that was just over the top of the ship's propellers. If the men had fallen, they would have certainly died. Once the crew member convinced the men to come down, he immediately informed the captain. The captain was immediately worried about both the stowaway's true identities and their intentions. The ship had just left Nigeria not long before, and in that country, the terrorist group Boko Haram was still running rampant. While the port was far away from the terrorist stronghold in the northeast, the group was known to send small cells of individuals throughout the country to carry out attacks. Because of this, out of an abundance of caution, the captain had the four men locked away in the quarantine room for safekeeping. This was because he was unsure if the men had hidden any weapons or explosive devices on the ship and did not want to give them the opportunity to use them if they were there. The next five days were normal after locking the men in the room. Crew members brought fresh changes of clothes, toiletries, food, and water to the men during their confinement. None of them exhibited any signs of what was to come during this time. As the ship passed through the Straits of Dover and began heading west toward the Thames estuary, the men, who at this point had been completely docile, broke out of quarantine and, in the words of a crew member, began to, quote, run amok. Once free from the room, the men armed themselves with metal tubes. Additionally, the men had been collecting some of their urine and feces, which they now assaulted crew members with. The men began to chase the crew members around the ship, and the captain ordered all 27 crew members to barricade themselves in the bridge. The bridge is the control center of the ship, where the captain and the crew could still pilot the ship but could not venture down below. As the crew was barricaded inside the bridge, the would-be hijackers told the captain that they needed him to maneuver the ship closer to shore so they could jump overboard and swim ashore. To back up this threat, they threatened violence against them if their demands were not met, including making throat-slitting gestures at them. The captain refused their demands and made a distress call asking for help. Emergency services advised the captain to slacken speed and instead do circles off the coast of the UK until help could arrive. This was at 9.15 in the morning. Within four hours, Prime Minister Theresa May ordered that a military response was appropriate to resolve the situation. The personnel the Ministry of Defense chose was the Secret Special Boat Service. The rescue mission, codenamed Operation Buckthorn, was now underway. Much like their cousins in the Special Air Service, the Special Boat Service, or SBS, is the UK's premier maritime special operations unit. Founded during World War II to carry out waterborne raids throughout the Mediterranean, the SBS carried on its legacy as a subordinate boat unit that conducted maritime SAS operations. In 1987, the SBS officially split from the SAS to become its own independent command. Though now a completely different unit, much of the training and skill sets between the two special forces units remains the same. The SBS is structured like the SAS and is divided into four squadrons. These squadrons rotate on which duties they're performing at a given time. For example, one squadron might be forward deployed abroad, conducting counterterrorism operations ashore, while another might be on call for defense of the homeland. When the Grande Tema incident occurred, the Ministry of Defense chose X Squadron to send a team to conduct an assault on the stricken vessel. At 1,312 hours, a four-man reconnaissance team left the SAS base 
at Creedon Hill for the Coast Guard base headquarters in Kent to get a briefing on the mission. Once they'd gathered all the information needed to understand what was going on, they left one SBS member there to continue liaising with the Coast Guard while the rest of the team went back to base to start planning the mission. Over the next several hours, as the SBS team briefed and prepared for the assault on the Grande Tema, the ship continued doing circles off the coast of England. Because of this, merchant traffic into the UK was severely disrupted since incoming vessels wanted to steer clear of the Grande Tema lest the terrorists decide to attack another passing ship. Finally, after more than five hours of planning, the team was ready. The SBS hand-selected a 25-man team from squadron personnel. The plan was for the team to board at the rear of the vessel and work their way toward the bridge. By doing it this way, they could flush the suspected terrorists toward the bridge, which they knew was locked so they couldn't hide or escape. Attacking from the bridge first might allow the would-be hijackers to flee to other parts of the ship and make it easier for the SBS personnel to get ambushed. With that plan in place, the team began boarding their helicopters for the hour or so helicopter ride from their base in southwest England to the Grande Tema on the southeast coast. The force boarded a mixed convoy of two Royal Navy Wildcat and Merlin helicopters. Those helos, known by their call signs Renegade 1, Renegade 2, Renegade 3, and Renegade 4, took off that evening and headed toward the Grande Tema. As the helos got closer to the ship, the situation in the air was tense. They had little time to prepare for their mission, and this was the first actual assault on a ship that the SBS had conducted in years, so no one had any experience with this kind of assault outside of training missions. For some members on board, this was their first actual mission in service, adding to the nervousness and tension. Once past the lights of the English coast, the men could see the Grande Tema lit up like a beacon. To make themselves more visible to the rescue personnel and distinguish themselves from other nearby merchant vessels, the crew of the Grande Tema had turned on all her available deck lighting. As the rescue force neared the vessel, they directed the crew to extinguish all lights on the ship. The SBS wanted the terrorists in the dark and disoriented as they made their approach. Each SBS member had his own set of night vision goggles, which would give them the advantage when clearing the ship while the potential terrorists were in pitch black darkness. As the team neared the vessel's rear, on cue, the crew shut off all lights. Each SBS squad fast roped from their respective helo onto the deck of the ship. Though no reports of the actual clearing were made public, what is known is that the raid lasted about 20 minutes. Within those 20 minutes, the team pushed its way to the bridge and encountered the hijackers. SBS members quickly disarmed them and locked them inside a cabin. After notifying the captain that the ship was now secure, he made his way into the port in Tilbury, docking about five hours later at 4.20 in the morning. Once pierside, British police swarmed the vessel and took the four men into custody on immigration violations. The ordeal was finally over for the crew of the Grande Tema, but who were these hijackers? Were they really terrorists? During the subsequent legal proceedings that took place at London's famous Old Bailey, the prosecution discovered that none of the four men had any ties to a terrorist group. Instead, the men who hailed from Nigeria and Liberia were economic migrants seeking a better life in the UK. Though they had threatened violence against the crew, they maintained they never wanted to hijack the vessel. They simply wanted the captain to get close enough to land so they could swim ashore. Despite their claims, the four men went on trial on hijacking and affray charges. The affray charges stemmed from threatening violence against the crew members. At trial, all four men were found innocent of the hijacking charges but guilty of the affray charges. The two ringleaders of the group were sentenced to 32 and 31 months in prison, respectively, while the other two men received a 16-month sentence each. For the men of X Squadron, this was the first rescue of a civilian vessel the SBS had undertaken since the 1972 operation to save the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II. The daring assault with little preparation in a high-density traffic area with zero casualties on either side is a testament to the excellent training and expertise of the SBS in carrying out such raids. The lessons learned from this raid likely played a huge role in a similar rescue during the 2020 Nave Andromeda incident, but that story's best left for another video. Now check out US Special Forces vs. Wagner Group, Battle of Kasham, or watch this video instead.